Hi, and welcome to 5-Minute Statistics for Clinical Research. My name is Caroline Herborn, and I am part of the Biostatistics team at GCP Service International. When conducting a clinical study, it is not only of interest if a treatment is clinically significant. It is also important to know how much a treatment improves a specific outcome. Opposing the point estimates, interval estimates are the more common approach since they are more reliable. We have introduced both concepts in a previous video. Confidence intervals are one of the most used interval estimators. In today's video we want to explain what these are, what they are used for and how they can be interpreted. Investigators in clinical trials are interested in whether or not the treatment effect of a new product or device is clinically significant. Frequently statistical outcomes are leaned on p-values, which in fact are only showing whether the effect is statistically significant or not. The appropriate tool here is actually the confidence interval. It is used to interpret the precision of the estimate. In contrast to statistical tests, confidence intervals also estimate in which interval the estimate ranges. They can be calculated for all parameters that are estimated from data, for example effect sizes, parameters or correlation coefficients. It is a range of confidence with a certain predefined error probability, a measure of the precision of an estimate. How is the confidence interval calculated? The calculation of the confidence interval is done through the point estimator, the standard error, as well as a quantile of the distribution of the point estimator. Before a confidence interval is calculated, the confidence level must be determined. It is the proportion of intervals that contain the true population parameter of interest in a set of repeated sampling. It is commonly chosen to be 95%, but also 90 or 99%. What parameters influence the width of a confidence interval? The width of a confidence interval is what defines its precision. Therefore, the interval is desired to be as narrow as possible, as this indicates a precise estimate of the true value. The width of a confidence interval is influenced by three parameters. First, the larger the sample size is, the smaller is the width of the confidence interval, and the more precise it will be. Second, the smaller the standard error, the smaller will also be the width of the confidence interval. And finally, the confidence level has an impact. The lower the confidence level is, the smaller will be the width of the confidence interval. Since the larger is the confidence, the less precise will be the interval. How is the confidence interval interpreted correctly? The confidence interval on a 95% level is the interval that covers an average the true parameter value in 95 of 100 repeated random samples taken from the same population. And even though it is impossible to know whether the calculated interval is containing a true value, it is nevertheless considered to be the best estimate for this purpose. The confidence level is also reflecting the probability of error that the sponsor is willing to take in return, also called alpha, which can simply be calculated by 1 minus the confidence level. In case of the 95% confidence interval, that would mean there is a 5% chance that the outcome is wrong and the real value is not covered by the interval. Confidence limits are usually reported as the estimate x with a lower and upper limit. The level of confidence should always be reported too. Let's look at an example. In a clinical trial, a new medicament is expected to reduce high blood pressure. Two weeks after treatment start, the new medicament has led to a mean reduction of systolic blood pressure of 10 mm of mercury. The 95% confidence interval ranges from minus 1 to 21 mm of mercury. So the point estimate shows an advantage for the investigated drug. The interval estimates, in contrast, indicate that the estimated effect lies between minus 1, which indicates a small advantage for the comparison treatment, and 21, which indicates a major improvement for the investigated treatment. Overall, no final conclusion could be drawn from the interval estimated, since the interval is quite large and therefore not very precise. So that is it for today. As you can see, when it is about the precision of a test result, confidence intervals are a more useful measure than p-values, which only reflect the statistical significance. Confidence intervals provide additional information about how large the effect could be, so answering the question how the clinical relevance for the finding is. If there are any additional questions, our team of statisticians is happy to help you out. Leave us a message at statistics at gcp-service.com or leave a comment below. If you are significantly satisfied with the content, make sure to subscribe to not miss the next video.